Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is fisheries biologist Russ Kinsler. Today we're going to talk about salmon. Here we are at Government Bay. Salmon fishing is going to pick up here end of July, Russ. Give, me a, give us a little background history on the salmon program in North Dakota. Okay, uh, well the current salmon species we're using are the Chinook salmon and they were first introduced into the lake in 1976. They were put into the lake uh, to take advantage of an underutilized colder portion of the lake, the deeper part of the lake, that there just wasn't any sport fish that really utilized it. So the salmon were put in to give anglers an opportunity to catch something in that space of the lake. Okay, and we harvest the eggs of the salmon and, and release salmon back in the following spring. All the salmon stocked in Lake Skakawea are, uh, the eggs are collected from Lake Skakawea and raised at, at the hatchery. Uh, we collect the eggs in October uh, each year. Uh, the spawn pretty much lasts the entire month of October. Um, the eggs are taken to the hatchery uh, and hatched and raised up and the following spring uh, they're stocked back into the, uh, the lake as smolts about four or five inches long. Would the salmon in Lake Sakaka be able to reproduce on their own? Uh, no, salmon uh, need a stream to run up, a cold water stream to run up into to spawn and you know we're in North Dakota we we don't have that mountain stream basically for them to run up to run up into spawn so without us spawning the salmon, um, in a matter of four or five years, they would disappear from Lake Skakawea. So if we didn't stock them, they wouldn't be here. Okay, how many did we stock this spring? Uh, this spring we put in uh, just over 400,000. How's that compared to like last year or the last several years? Pretty similar to what we've been trying to do the last uh, four or five years. Um, it's a little bit less than we put in last year, um, but it's quite a bit more than we put in two years ago, which we fell short of meeting our goal that year. How do you determine how many uh, you stock for us? Um, it's basically, we look at the, the smell population in the lake and, uh, and then stock salmon according to you know what that population is. Um, we determine that every year and in August, or late July or in August, we go out with uh, hydroacoustic gear um, and basically drive around the lake and it's a fancy depth finder that basically estimates how many smelt are in the lake. Okay, earlier in the year, uh, smelt die off. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, um, just after the smelt spawn uh, we had a die off in the lake. Uh, the main part of the die off was kind of centered around the Van Hook arm. Um, there was reports above that and below it but that was the main concentration of the die off. It looked like a lot of fish to the average person but in reality it, it wasn't and, and it's not uncommon for that die off to occur. And what it is is the smelt are stressed from spawning and generally when we see it, we see a spike in the, te the temperatures outside. And like that weekend that that happened, it jumped up to 90 degrees for a couple of days. And then that just stresses the, the fish and they, they get what is basically columnaris. It's a, a looks like a mold or a, a fungus on the fish and then that ends up with killing them. We'll find out this August how, how big a die off it really was, but we've seen a similar die off like this a couple years ago. And it, it really wasn't that significant. Sure, so the forage should be good for the salmon. Yeah, yeah. we should have plenty of forage out there for the salmon and, and walleyes and northerns and other fish out there. What kind of equipment do you need for salmon fishing, deep water salmon fishing? Okay, the, the deeper water salmon fishing generally starts in the end of July and then runs through uh, August and into September. Um, it generally occurs along the face of the dam and across Government Bay here and up to the north towards Dead Man's Bay. Uh, people generally use downriggers, um, and they fish down 50 to 100, 100 plus feet. Uh, you know, usually pulling flashers and squid or needlefish. Uh, that's the most common gear used. As everybody knows, we have high water in Lake Sakakawea. Walleye fishing is probably the best it's ever been. How is salmon fishing going to be? Um, we're hoping it's going to be really good, uh, but with the high water, like you said, there's lots of cold water out there, and uh, the salmon could. I mean, they, they can be on this end of the lake, they could be all the way up to the Newtown Bridge. I mean, there's, there's habitat there for them to, li to live up there and, and, you know, be just happy up there. You have the high water, which, you know, makes it, I'm not sure what that's going to do. Plus, you have very high releases going out of Garrison Dam right now, and who knows how that's going to affect the salmon. Uh, last year, we had water that was pretty high, but not like this, and it, it took a long time for the salmon to come down. In fact, they didn't really come down until October. So, I mean, it was decent salmon fishing last year, but it could have been better. So salmon fishing goes, I mean, good salmon fishing is all the way through to October. Yeah, yeah, once, uh, 
you know, they'll start fishing in the end of July and fish with downriggers in August. And then once we get into that Labor Day weekend, the salmon tend to start moving shallow. So you get guys running long lines uh, along the dam, pulling crankbaits. And then once you get into the end of September and October, you can start catching them offshore even. Russ, tell me a little bit about the salmon tagging program. We've done that for how many years now? Oh, uh, since the mid nineties. Uh, uh, every year we tag a certain percentage of the salmon. Um, this year it was about 10% is what we tagged, uh, about 40,000. We've been doing that to try and figure out what's the best size of salmon to stock as far as getting fish back to the spawn and to the angler and then what's the best location to stock. Um, so we've been doing this for quite a while and what we've come, what we kind of settled on is that they need to be in that 30 per pound which is a, a four to five inch fish and what that does is it gets them big enough to get away to where gold eyes aren't predating on them. Um, when they're smaller gold eyes really predate on salmon. Um, so once we get them to the 30 per pound you know we've got them over that hurdle. Um, the other thing we've learned is that Government Bay and Rodeo Bay seem to uh, yield the best return to the angler. So as of right now, that's kind of what we've settled on and uh, we'll uh, see if we continue the tagging program or not here in the future. Okay, how does an angler know if, if the salmon's tagged? Okay, if they catch a, a salmon and the adipose fin, which is the, the fleshy lobe fin towards the back of the salmon on, on the top, if that's missing, then there's a good chance there's a tag in the, in the salmon's head. And what the anglers need to do is basically just cut the head off and, and put it in a bag. Most people take it to, because they catch them right here, they drop them off at the, the gas station in Riverdale, which is the honey hole, or the gas station in Pick City, which is Scott's Bait and Tackle. They'll accept your heads. Or you can drop it off at a Game and Fish District office or the headquarters in Bismarck. We'll dig the tag out in the winter and I'll get you a, a salmon letter that explains where the fish is stocked and how big they were. A lot of good information, Russ. Thank you. Thank you. If you plan to go salmon fishing, the daily limit is 5 and the possession limit is 10. For more information on rules and regulations for fishing for salmon or any fish, pick up a 2018 to 2020 North Dakota Fishing Guide or go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For fisheries biologist Russ Kinsler and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.